Dad and kids play one. From super powered mutants who can fire a large optic blast from their eyes. Two world warriors who master the Hado energy. I'm Dad Mashima, and these are six unique things about X Men versus Street Fighter. Number one, it's the first Marvel game to include tag battle. X Men vs. Street Fighter is the third entry in the fighting series, but it's the first game to include tag team fighting. Also, this will be the first game to include both Marvel and Capcom characters, respectively. This game went on in defined two on two vs. style, and it will be used a few times more until Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Using the tag function worked extremely well and will become a core mechanic of the games that follow. X-Men vs. Street Fighter was first released back in September of 1996 for the arcades, then a year later for the Sega Saturn. The Sony PlayStation port will be released in 1998. Number 2. It kept the same fighting system from Marvel Super Heroes. Marvel Super Heroes had course corrected X-Men Children of the Atoms broken combat system, which gave every character a launcher and added overall balance in the game. X-Men vs. Street Fighter continued with the system, but added an expansion with the tag function. However, unlike Marvel Super Heroes, the Infinity Gem system was gone. Besides tagging in your partner, you can also perform what is called variable combo. This is the move where the point character and their partner attack with a combination super. Also, this is another effective way of tagging in your partner. The variable combo will go on and be another key component in versus games and has forever changed the way players fight. Number 3. It's the first game to include both Marvel and Capcom characters in its roster. X-Men vs. Street Fighter had an amazing roster for its time, and just as the name implies, the roster has both X-Men and Street Fighter characters. There are 17 characters in total with an unplayable boss. On the X-Men side, these characters consist of Cyclops, Wolverine, Rogue, Storm, Gambit, Magneto, Juggernaut, and Sabretooth. On the Street Fighter side, we have Ryu, Ken, Chung Li, Zangief, Dalsim, M. Bison, Kami, Charlie, and Akuma. Then there's Apocalypse, who will serve as the last boss and final X-Men character. Like I said, the roster was amazing for its time and I was very happy to see returning characters, but it was very unfortunate that Colossus and Silver Samurai didn't make it in. Okay, so that last statement was personal. Number 4. It was the first appearance of Rogue, Gambit, and Sabretooth in a Capcom fighter. So on the X-Men side of things, most of the X-Men characters returned with only a few exceptions. Psylocke, Omega Red, Silver Samurai, Iceman, Colossus, and Sentinel was cast aside, and in their place we got Rogue, Gambit, and Sabretooth. Rogue, who can be summarized as both a rushdown and dash style character, was a great addition to the game and to the series as a whole. Gambit was a cool mutant who was good with mix-ups and could unleash the deadly hyper move called the Royal Flush. Then there's Sabretooth who is massive in size, but don't let that fool you because he's very fast and nimble. All of these characters serve their purpose well and will eventually lead on to a higher calling. Number 5. The Sega Saturn port was almost arcade perfect. The Sega Saturn may have lost the war in the 32-bit era of gaming, but it kicked serious butt when it came to 2D fighters and X-Men vs Street Fighter was no exception. This version of the game included most of the characters animations and with a constant frame rate. As a matter of fact, this variation looked and played so well, it was almost arcade perfect. However, the PlayStation will receive a port of this game the following year, and let me tell you, I was so disappointed. 
This version has missing frames from its animation and due from the PlayStation memory limitations, you couldn't tag at all. Nevertheless, the game was still playable, but at the expense of what truly made the game different. But yeah, the best way to play the home port of this game is definitely on the Sega Saturn. For six, Street Fighter Alpha version of Chung Li is a secret character. If you love Street Fighter Alpha, then I have good news for you. There's a cheat that allows the player to select the Street Fighter Alpha version of Chung Li. To do this, highlight Chung Li in the character select screen, then hold start and press any button to select her. Now, this version of Chung Li plays like her regular counterpart. She just wears her Street Fighter Alpha attire. And that's it. Well, everyone, that's it for this video. If you have anything you would like to add or if you have a question, feel free to leave a comment. With that being said, I'm Dad Mishima. See you next video. Yeah.